Uh, this is question number five now from the June 2011 BY1 paper. Um, it's uh, a question on biological molecules. Okay. And uh, you've got a diagram there of two molecules, which the examiner has called molecule A and B. And he's just told you they're found in living organisms. Okay. Um, right. So, again, you, you, you need to be able to identify um structures of biological molecules okay not not so much draw them although that would be useful but certainly identify them okay um so let me identify them for you okay before we go any further all right uh basically the the first uh molecule is an amino acid okay uh the reason why or how you can tell of course is you've got that amine group uh, on the end there, all right, the NH2 group, and the other end of the molecule you have the uh, the acid group, okay. Uh, so that's the uh, the classic features there of an amino acid, okay. Uh, molecule uh, B then is um, uh, should be straightforward because you are actually told the name of the components of this molecule, so you're told there's a glycerol and uh, fatty acids present of which there are three okay um just to point out to you the uh, hydrocarbon chain of the fatty acid has been drawn as a zigzag line here uh, that is a standard abbreviation for a uh, hydrocarbon chain okay um Right, so uh, here we go then, name molecules A and B. So A is an amino acid, okay, and uh, B, now what, what do we call it? Uh, is it a lipid? Um, is it a fat? Uh, is it a triglyceride? Okay, um, now um, in the mark scheme, um, the examiner is not allowing lipid, okay, um, I'd be honest with you, I don't know why he wouldn't accept a lipid there. Uh, the answer that he wants in this case is a triglyceride. Okay, so uh, obviously a triglyceride is, is just another name for a, for a fat or a lipid there. Okay, so uh, I'll jot those answers in in a moment, but let's move on to part A2. Name an element found in molecule A that is not found in molecule B. Okay, so you do have to know um, the atoms that are present in these molecules, okay, and in previous videos that has come up, uh, uh, one question we did on uh, nucleotides, you were, uh, or had a mark for mentioning about the atoms in a nucleotide. Um, so basically then, um, what uh, what's found in molecule A? that's not found in uh, molecule B. Well, both molecules, let, let's look at what they, they do have uh, in, in common. Uh, they've all got carbon, they've all got the oxygen, and they've all got the hydrogen, okay? Um, but with an amino acid, this R group, um, okay, you can have uh, different atoms in addition to the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, so a typical uh, thing that you could have in an R group, of course, is sulfur. All right, and the cysteine amino acid would have an R group with uh, sulfur present in it. All right, so that's one uh, answer that you could put. You could put sulfur, okay. But um, amino acids also have nitrogen in them. It's part of the NH2 group on the amino acid. Uh, nitrogen is not uh, not found in uh, triglycerides. Uh, so you could have put either sulfur or nitrogen uh, for part two. Okay, so uh, I've just jotted uh, those answers in uh, for you. Right, moving on to part B then. Uh, many molecules of A can join together to form a long chain. Name the process that joins the molecules together. Okay, so let's underline that. The process that joins molecules together and the bond formed when they join. Now, if you couldn't identify what molecule A is, you're likely to have lost another two marks for this part B. 
okay um so really this is a this is a question that's really gonna uh, cost you dearly if you have a little bit of uh, uh, lack of knowledge all right you could potentially lose three marks uh, here if not more we'll we'll see now what question c is asking us um so basically uh, the um reaction the process that joins the molecules together he's really talking about the reaction isn't he okay and there's only one reaction that you need to know about that joins molecules together and that's the condensation uh, reaction okay um the bond formed when they join well each amino acid is joined there by a, a peptide bond okay Right, so I've written that uh, answer in for you. Uh, part C then, describe a suitable test that could be performed to show that a solution contained polymers of molecule A. So, golly, again, you, you potentially could have lost two marks if you didn't know what molecule A was. Uh, so this could have been a very costly um, question if you hadn't revised proteins uh, and amino acids. OK, this is why it's so essential to be thoroughly prepared uh, for your exams. OK, um, so uh, polymers of molecule A, of course, are proteins. And the test for a protein uh, is known as the Biorets test. OK, and um, the thing to remember with, with describing tests uh, for biological molecules is to state the colour uh, at the start and the colour change uh, that occurs when uh, the molecule of interest is present. OK, so the Biorets test, uh, you actually had a Biorets uh, solution, which is blue in colour. And if there is a, a protein present, that turns a, a really nice uh, violet purple colour. OK, and the other thing to note about the Biorets test is uh, you don't need uh, to heat the solution. OK, um, just in passing, you, you need to know about the Benedict's test for a reducing sugar. Uh, that test you actually need to heat and boil. Uh, but back to the Biorets test, no heat uh, involved and the colour change goes from blue uh, to purple uh, or violet. OK, so I've just said you would use the Biorets test, which will change colour from blue to purple uh, if a protein uh, is present. OK, um, I haven't actually written in uh, about the fact you don't need you don't need to heat, but that is something that you uh, you could possibly add in uh, the mark scheme for this particular essay uh, question. Sorry, doesn't actually give you a mark for that, but uh, uh, in other mark schemes I've seen a mark uh, be awarded for that so it's it's just good practice to put as much relevant information in as possible okay then lastly then um, suggest a problem that could arise if using this test if very low concentrations of the polymer are present uh, in the solution okay now um, in in other video tutorials um, we've looked at um, um, glucose strips where the strip changes colour to, to measure the level of glucose. Um, this uh, this test, this Biorets test is similar in the sense that you are observing a colour change. Uh, there's no no enzymes involved uh, in this like the uh, the glucose strip. Um, but what what's happening is that this is a uh, qualitative measurement where you observe a colour change and um, the problem with this type of, of test is that if you do have low levels of a protein uh, in your sample, you, you won't get a very obvious colour change. OK, uh, it's great if you've got loads of protein present, you get this really nice dark purple colour. But if you have uh, minute amounts of protein, the, the Biorets test isn't quite sensitive enough to create a good colour change. Um, so you may not be able to observe the colour change and, and that could be the problem with low concentrations of the protein. OK, so there's, uh, there's my answer there. If the concentration of protein was low, then only a slight 
uh, or small color change would occur and this would be difficult uh, to see okay then let's just quickly look at the mark scheme okay there's nothing really uh, to discuss there all right this mark uh, sorry this question was worth eight marks okay um, if you'd revised well enough you shouldn't have a problem with this okay I'm not going to apologize for repeating myself you need to practice questions often okay every week uh, check your answers um, and you need to do good revision um, throughout the year do not cram last minute you need to, to to work every week and make sure that you are understanding and remembering uh, the, uh, the the work as you go along um, and that will will save a whole host of problems for you okay